take a look now at the glands that compose the endocrine system. We will take a closer look at the hormones that they produce in the rest of the video series. We'll take a look specifically at each gland and the hormones they produce. For this video, I just want us to know what the glands are, where the glands are, and basic what they're composed of, what's their anatomy. So this is what the video is going to be about. It might take a little bit of time to get through here, but you really need to know where they are and what they are before you start learning about the hormones that they produce. So a gland. A gland is an organized collection of epithelial cells that secrete stuff. Again, remember from our epithelial tissue section. They are derived from the invagination and ingrowth of lining epithelium into underlying connective tissue. What happens is epithelial cells group in and then they are wrapped with connective tissue. This can be a cell or a group of cells. Again, if you recall from our epithelial discussion earlier on, they can either be exocrine glands, which have ducts, or endocrine glands, which are ductless. Here are the endocrine glands. You should be aware of their location. We have the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland, the adrenal gland, the sex glands, i.e. the gonads, the pancreas, and other endocrine glands, the pineal gland, hypothalamus, the kidneys, the placenta, the intestinal mucosa. Some of these we will look at in other lessons. So for example, intestinal mucosa goes great with our discussion on the digestive system. Let's first begin by talking about the big cheese, the big guy, the one in charge, and that would have to be the pituitary gland. In fact, you might hear the pituitary gland called the master gland because it controls a whole bunch of stuff. In addition to be calling the pituitary gland, you might also hear it being called the hypothesis. It's about one centimeter in diameter and about 0.5 to one gram in weight. It sits in the Turkish saddle. The what? <laughs> if you remember from your skeletal system, within the skull, we had the sphenoid bone, and within the sphenoid bone, we had a dip. This dip was the cella tersica, and that translates into Turkish saddle. So the pituitary gland is sitting in the cella tersica. It is connected to the hypothalamus by something called the pituitary stalk. You might also hear it being called the hypophyseal stalk or infundibulum. And physiologically, there are two lobes to the pituitary gland. One of the lobes, the front lobe, the anterior lobe, is developed by epithelial tissue, while the back lobe, the posterior lobe, is developed from nervous tissue. Let's take a look first at the anterior lobe, also known as the adenohypothesis. This, as I said, is developed from epithelial tissue. It is made of five types of cells. Each of these cells produce a specific hormone. The adenohypothesis anterior lobe produces, stores, and secretes six polypeptides or peptide hormones that you need to be aware of. Here is the list. Again, we will talk about each of these in more detail actually in our next video. We have the growth hormone, prolactin, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, and a mouthful, the adrenocortical trophic hormone. Again, we'll take a look at all of these in more detail in our next series of videos. You might also notice off the bat that the abbreviations are behind them. You might see instead of like growth hormone, you might just see GH written in endocrinology world. The posterior lobe, the back lobe, also known as the neurohypothesis or pars nervosa, this is developed from nervous tissue. The cell bodies of these are found in the hypothalamus. Now think about this. The posterior lobe is nervous tissue. Neurons have cell bodies. In this case, the cell body is actually located in the hypothalamus. It creates the hormones in the hypothalamus and sends them down the nervous tissue into the posterior lobe. The two important hormones that we need to be aware of that the posterior lobe produces are oxytocin or oxytoxin, I've heard it pronounced both ways, as well as antidiuretic hormone. Moving down to our neck area, we have the thyroid gland. It's located anterior to the trachea around cervical three, the fifth vertebrae. It's palpable at the root of the neck and moves when you swallow. Size and weight will vary. 
For example, I have a little bit of a goiter. Large size does not mean pathology, although I did have to have a biopsy, which was a lot of fun. Needle this big, going in your neck. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, but the size and weight will vary and has a very rich blood supply and nerve supply. It is composed of two lobes, a right and a left lobe, and it's joined in the middle by something called the isthmus. It's the bridge between the two lobes. The thyroid gland is a collection of spherical follicles and extra follicle cells wrapped up in connective tissue. The follicle and the extra follicular cells are what is going to produce the important hormones. And the important hormones, the two, the T3 and the T4, deal with metabolism, while the third hormone, calcitonin, deals with calcium and phosphate ion concentrations in the blood. Cool fact, the term thyroid gland comes from the Greek adjective meaning shield shape, and if you take a look at it, you can kind of see where they came up with that. On the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland are the parathyroid glands. There are two paired glands on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland. They're small yellowish brown dots encased in a thin capsule of connective tissue. They have one hormone that they produce that you need to be aware of, and that is the parathyroid hormone, and that deals with calcium ion and phosphate ion levels in the blood. When I was in undergrad learning about my anatomy for the very first time, our professor told us that back in the old days, whenever they did thyroid surgery, it was about a 50-50 shot because if they had to remove thyroid, they didn't even know these little bad boys were there. And so if they cut them off, the patient died. So that was bad. Now, I don't know if that was completely true, but hey, I learned it in school. And as we know, everything you learn in school is got to be absolutely correct. Ooh, and I'm a teacher. Bad, Mr. Ford, bad. <laughs> Moving on, before I get in too much trouble, we have the adrenal glands. These are gonna sit on top of the kidneys. They are little dunce caps on top of the kidneys. They are pyramid shaped, and they are encased in adipose tissue. We have two distinct structures. We have a middle and an outside world. We have the adrenal medulla and the adrenal cortex. The adrenal medulla is the center of the gland. It's surrounded by the cortex. Functionally, it's very similar or very functionally related to the sympathetic nervous system. It's going to produce and release epinephrine and norepinephrine. So this is dealing with a fight or flight response. The adrenal cortex is the big outside portion. It's going to surround the medulla and it has three distinct layers. It has the zona glomerulus, the zona fasciculata, and the zona reticularis. It makes lots of steroid hormones of interest, such as mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids, and sex hormones. Again, we'll take a look at those in future videos. Behind the stomach, we have the pancreas. The pancreas is kind of a cool organ in that it has an exocrine and an endocrine function. The endocrine function that we're interested in is located within the islets of Langerhans. The islets of Langerhans is the exocrine portion and it's made of four different types of cells. We have alpha cells, which make glucagon. We have beta cells, which makes insulin. We have delta cells, which make somatostatin, and we have PP cells, which are just fun to talk about. You got the PP cells. <laughs> All right, we're not really worried about those, but we will look at alpha, beta, and delta cells and their products again in later videos. Moving up a little bit to behind the sternum, we find the thymus. It serves an important function in the youngins out there. Once you hit puberty, it starts to atrophy and start to fill with fat. Its main purpose is to stimulate lymphoid tissue to produce lymphocytes. The pineal gland is located within the brain. It's a small ovoid gland located deep between the cerebral hemispheres. It's attached to the upper portion of the thalamus. It makes melatonin. Kind of a cool little fact, they used to think that when you opened your eyes, light would hit the pineal gland, which is where the seat of the soul was located, the human soul. That's where they used to think it was located in. Moving further down from the brain down to, down to the nether regions, we have the reproductive organs. The ovaries, placenta, testes produce hormones. Structure, we'll talk about these in the reproductive system, which I am sure will be an absolute blast once I record those. Hormones for these things are covered later on in our endocrine system lesson. 
in our next video, I've talked about it in our next video, we're actually going to delve into pituitary gland world and start to take a look at these specific hormones that are produced.